Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Thanks, man. So I'm just looking to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. It's like dad dropping us off at the pool. Thanks, dad. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Tech guy's taking care of me. Hello, and welcome to Taiwan Plus ICRT. It's an interview series brought to you by Taiwan Plus and ICRT. I'm your host, Trevor Tortomasi, and for this week's episode, we're speaking with Jim Geddes. He's a freelance musician and the founder and band leader of TPO Big Band. And just one thing before we begin, uh, the day that I interviewed Jim, I was very busy, and so I forgot to take off my face mask. So I'm just going to get into character really quick. Okay, now we're ready. Let's hear from Jim about the formation of the TPO Big Band and his history with music. So I guess getting right into it, what is the Taipei Professional Orchestra? Uh, the TPO Big Band, we're made of uh, the smallest is probably 16 members. So the biggest we've been is I mean, let me just roughly about 25, actually. Um, and we are a collective of professional musicians uh, from Taipei, uh, either people who are based here or uh, people who grew up in Taiwan. This is a collective of these musicians because last year, because of COVID actually, because they are all here in Taiwan at the same time now. And so it's an opportunity for them to get together uh, and get to know each other. Um, the gathering and, of the tribe. Yeah, kind of. You yeah. can kind of say that. Originally, the band we had uh, come together as a practice, and I think this is a good way for them to get to know each other, uh, kind of a networking opportunity. But also, usually, big band is usually known to have more difficult music. Okay. And so, it's a good way to still play jazz and and do those kinds of things. And for the for the musically uninitiated, how many people need to be in a big band, or is it just sort of a, a grain of sand versus pile of sand? Well, the traditional big band, the American big band that was found, they were became popular in the 1930s and 1940s, would be the setup of five saxophones, four trombones, four trumpets, and a r rhythm section of guitar, piano, bass, and drums. But for us, we add we actually have a tuba player, uh, which sits down and plays uh, either the four trombone parts. Um, we have a fifth trumpet, um, and then we have a lot of percussion that we'll add. And then for the Christmas show, we'll add French horns, which kind of give it that really more cheerful French horn sound. Yeah, the wholesome, yeah. The wholesome big band. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. We actually did a, uh, a live recording performance. Mm -hmm. And so this is where we had an audience as we, as we performed. And everyone in the audience actually had uh, the wireless headphones. Yeah. And so people could actually hear basically what it would sound like as we were recording. That's awesome. It was a really cool experience. Uh, of course, we stole this idea from Snarky Puppy. Oh, yeah, because there's so many. To my heart. Yes. Yeah, because there's so many video concerts of them, and what they did is they, they felt like, okay, how can we have an album and still give it that live feel, but still have it to be the highest quality? And but just to see that, okay. We could feel this interaction with the audience, and 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 they could feel it, and and it kind of brings that higher level of, of doing things live versus doing a studio recording, and kind of melding them together. And you'll be releasing this album soon. Yes, end of December. Uh, tentative date will be twelve twenty one. Okay, awesome. Keep on the lookout for that. What has been the hardest part of making an album during the pandemic? Actually, why I even have the big band is because of the pandemic, which is kind of opposite of where mm. we've been the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, most of the world, especially in the U.S., they end up doing albums where everyone is separated. And so everyone recorded their parts at home. And so we were actually able to record together. Um, so we record this at Yuchung Cinema Studios. And where everyone, of course, everyone's wearing face masks, you know, we're doing, health, you know, health checks and everything. Little hole for the trombone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> us recording, we didn't, but we were as socially distanced as possible. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but every, uh, everyone in the audience, we wanted to make sure, because the audience, you know, they're usually right. sitting together. And this is before we, we went into lockdown here in Taiwan. A joke, but safety first, guys. Yeah, actually, okay, yes, very, first. very true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in an older interview, you did say something, I'm paraphrasing here, but mm. basically the bigger the scene, um, the more things there are for people to be interested in and the more it grows as a result. I mean, that makes sense. Mm. And you've just described that sort of happening with TPO. Um, my question is, what changes have you seen across Taiwan's music scene since TPO started to grow over the past year? Well, I've seen people who met each other because of the big band, mm -hmm. and now they're starting to do their own groups. Um, and they're starting to be like, oh, hey, I know this guy from the big band. I know that he can, that he can read really well. 
uh, okay, let's use him. It's okay, let's do this kind of jazz. Let's do this kind of rock. Let's do this kind of other thing. And these little bands have started to sprawl up and now they're starting to go to different places and have shows. I'm starting to, a lot of people are starting to see that the idea of higher level music is definitely capable here in Taiwan. Mm. In the pop scene, but also like just in general. And there's a lot of potential here that is being realized. Yeah, they just opened a music center in Kaohsiung. Yeah, uh, Kaohsiung, yes. Uh, I know plans that, for that? Uh, not yet. Or you're not allowed to say, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you if I did. Um, so I guess moving on to talking more about you and, and your background, where are you originally from? Um, I'm originally from Wisconsin in the USA. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I, I basically, my roots are in Wisconsin, Minnesota. Uh, I actually went into my Minnesota accent real quick. Oh. <laughs> Minnesota. <laughs> and in the Midwest, if you're from the USA, you could almost identify a Midwesterner almost immediately, not by the, the crazy accent, but uh, basically because of the work ethic. Because uh, we say in the Midwest, there's nothing to do but practice. So, and then what, what else did you do? I heard that you had played on Broadway before. When um, did you make the move to? Yeah, so actually I never lived in New York. Actually, I had a permanent couch in New York. Okay. Um, and so my affiliation with Broadway is I was doing tours. And so basically whenever a show, they were on Broadway, they, of course, what they did is they toured. And so we would, we would rehearse the show for two weeks and then the, the tour would go out for about a year long. And so everything would be based out of New York. Um, and so, and then there's the off-Broadway that I was able to sub and do that kind of work and meet with all these other people. Nice. You know, it was, it was just a lot of fun. It was really cool to see almost every inch of the U.S. But also eventually these tours we went to, uh, it's the first time how I came over to Asia was uh, with these tours. Um, we also went to Europe for it, uh, yeah, mainly Europe and Asia mm -hmm. uh, outside of the U.S. How long have you been in Taiwan now? Uh, I've been here for, I'm on my, I'm starting my sixth year here now. Six year, okay, mm. wow. Uh, but the first time I came here was maybe nine, ten years ago. And what uh, what made you decide to stay in Taiwan? Basically, I wanted to see what else I could do. Because mm -hmm. in the U.S., uh, I felt like, you know, I was I was getting to play uh, with some really amazing musicians, and they've been doing the, the, the Broadway tours for maybe, you know, 30, 35 years. And a lot of these guys, a, a show would come through and I get to play next to them. I get called for it and like, oh, okay, I've been doing this for 35 years. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not grateful. Actually, that would be a, a really amazing career, but I wanted to see kind of what else I could do. Mm. Every time I came to Taiwan, it was very comfortable. If you wanted to get out of Taipei, it's very easy. You know, there's, there's easy bus routes. Uh, and for me, like, I love going to the beach. I love hiking in mountains. I love doing outdoor type things. Mm. And I felt in Taiwan, it was, the outdoors is very accessible. I had my mind blown to learn that uh, Taiwan is a huge exporter of saxophones. Uh, saxophones, and now they're of many, many, I, I call them boutique instruments. Okay. And so, do uh, you know what I mean by boutique? Is well, like, uh, please explain for the okay, listen, okay. For the so listeners. I, I, I know, of course. <laughs> yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. But. I, I, so the boutique means that it's tailored for you. Mm -hmm. Which means that, for instance, if I stay in a, a boutique hotel, they know that maybe I'm someone who's in hotels every single day. Mm, okay. Versus another one, okay, someone rents a hotel once a year or something like that. So you're saying the saxophones made here are the saxophonist saxophones. Exactly. Okay. They're, they're custom <laughs> instruments. Right. Many, many brands are made here. And so they, they make the saxophone up to a certain level. Uh, they're, very, they're very, very playable and they're very well when they're done. But they also have the opportunity to be manipulated after that. And then, uh, so speaking of, of learning and, and teaching, uh, you're also teaching at the uh, Taipei American School? Uh, yes, I do tutor there from time to time. So I guess simple question about teaching. What have you learned from teaching students of music here? A lot of musicians, uh, the professional ones, they, they only play music. And I tell them, hey, it's very important for you to teach. Hmm. And they're like, uh, but I'm already playing. Why would I want to teach? You know, they go, it's because when you teach, you have to explain something. You have to explain how to play an instrument, which a lot of times for me is very natural. I don't think about, okay, I have to do this with my mouth. I have to put my hands here. But when you're learning a saxophone, you have to. And if you're teaching someone how to do that, that also makes you have to realize what you're actually doing. And mm. maybe you can find a better way to do it. And so that's the reason why I think that uh, there, are, there are a lot of great teachers out there, but the, the really, really great teachers are also the uh, are the, some of the best performers out there too. Mm. And so for me to start working with younger students, which I had never done before Taipei American School, it's really taught me, okay, so there's many, many ways to play one thing. 
And that's for sure. There are many, many ideas other than my own, of course. And what can I learn from those other ideas? And how can I make my, myself a better musician?、Uh, what can I do differently? Because I realized, oh, this student, he found this other way I would have never thought of because no one showed him how to do this.、Mm-hmm. And so he found this other way, which, oh, actually, that works better. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. This works better. Yeah. Yeah.、Um, do you tell them that you learned from them? Or no, you don't of course not. <laughs> <laughs> of course tell them. <laughs> yeah, if they're paying me to be there,、uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we have things that we need to see more of in Taiwan、uh, that I would like to see more of in Taiwan, and that, that's a good example of something.、Um, okay. What do you think the world needs to see more of from Taiwan? I feel like Taiwan is this, this,、uh, this, this bed of potential.、Mm. And I think that. A lot of times, a lot of people here don't see it because they, they see in movies that America is the place to be. They see that Europe is the place to be. It's because America makes all the movies. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's correct.、Yeah. You know, if anything, this pandemic does is it, it's forced the Taiwanese and people here who are basically they're expats、uh, to look at Taiwan and go, actually, it's been here the whole time.、Mm. You know, and if we focus on here, we can bring it out. Awesome. I'm happy to hear it. Looking forward to what comes in the future.、Um, and、uh, going back to you, I guess,、uh, where can people find more of your work?、Uh, well, for me, I'm, I'm basically, I, because I've done this TPO Big Band, it's become my life. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know?、uh, so we're, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram,、um, mm-hmm. and it's very easy. It's TPO Taipei.、Uh, okay. And it's, you can find exactly what we're doing, who's playing in the band. But we, we rehearse、uh, at a, a restaurant called Smexi. Um, and I think it's one of the few places in, in Taipei that can have a big band. We, we play there once a month right now.、Hmm. Um, and I started a new band called the TPO Mini, which has 10 people, but it's still mini compared to a 20 <laughs> person big band, right? Yeah. Well,、uh, the, the album's name is?、Uh, it'll be TPO Live at Yu Chung Cinema Studios. All right. And you can go see Tim Geddes and the TPO play at Smexi as well. That's and correct. And we'll be all around the island, and you'll definitely see us more in the future, too. All right, Jim Geddes, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for having me. <laughs> You're、no. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. We can end on a laugh. I feel good about that. Okay, okay. okay.